Hello, it's Keith from Kinvert. In this video, we're gonna be going over some of the more advanced settings in Slick 3R. If you're one of the kids in our in-person classes, you're not really gonna do this. Um, we've already set up the configs for you, um, but some people might be interested in some of the more advanced settings. Um, let's just start diving in so we can go to the print settings. By the way, to get to this, you need to go to, where was it? Preferences, and you need to set mode to expert. Um, and make sure to do that. And then I think you need to close the software and start it back up to actually get into expert mode. So keep that in mind. Uh, we go to print settings and there's a lot of stuff here. So the layers and perimeters, the layer height, this is one of the biggest things you can do to change the quality of your print. You can turn this smaller, is gonna get you better print. So like 0.1 is gonna print much higher quality, but it's gonna take, you know, I don't know, nine times longer to print or something like that. Um, maybe only three times longer. It's going to take a lot longer to print. Um, you've got first layer height. This is kind of indicating, um, well, yeah, that's literally just saying what it is, the first layer. Perimeters, this is how thick the outer face is. So like, for example, if I zoom in, go to a mid layer, you'll see that it's three um, here. So one, two, three perimeters. If I go into here, it'll make the part weaker, but it will print quicker. So if I change that to one, and I go back to the preview, I probably got to drag this again. Now we'll see that there's only one perimeter here. Um, so the model's weaker, but it will print quicker. Um, so maybe that's what you want. When we make parts that are intentionally kind of soft, we will do this like um, if we're using Ninja Flex or something like that, we will actually go one layer thick. Um, but generally we just stick with the defaults here. Um, and then the same is true here for the top and bottom layers. You can also choose that. Um, and there, there's a lot of other stuff in here too that you can mess with and see how it affects things. Um, thin walls can be important, especially students sometimes like to put text in their print and uh, a lot of that will show up as a thin wall. We can go to infill and the fill density is very important. Now, actually typically we have this around 10%. Um, and so what we can do is go into here and you can notice the width of the foot is almost a full hexagon across. If I go back to print settings and change this to 10%, and then we go back, if we look, we'll see that these hexagons became much larger. So the in full percentage is what percentage of the middle of the model is actually full of plastic. The higher the percentage, the stronger the model will be, but it will take longer. Um, we can also, I'll turn this back up so you can see the patterns. Honeycomb is what we tend to use, which is the hexagons. There's a really cool one. There's a Hilbert curve, looks pretty cool. You can mess around with those and see how it changes the way the inside looks. But you can see there that the infill pattern has changed from hexagons to Hilbert curves, and there are plenty of others. You can mess with those. I'm going to go back. Top and bottom fill pattern, rectilinear. Um, that just means it kind of zigzags. But I could do, for example, concentric. And if you look at the uh, top layer, now you'll see how it kind of loops around and it makes these concentric lines generally, except these ones are not right here. These areas are not. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of other ones that you can, Hilbert curve, um, I have a feeling it'll take a really long time and it might not work well on the, um, on the infill you choose. Um, but it looks kind of cool. We tend to just use rectilinear and there's others you can check out. Um, let's see, solid fill. We don't really do this, but if you wanted solid fill every certain number of layers, increase like the area moment of inertia, make it a little stronger, that could work. Fill angle 45. Um, that's just making sure that, well, we, we can mess with this so we can go to 90 since we're at rectilinear and you'll see that it'll start Am I still on Hilbert curve? I thought I droop. There we go. So now you can see it goes straight across. And this can be useful if you've got bridges or something like that. Um, you might want to mess with this. We tend to just leave it at 45 and then you'll see it'll go at these angles again. See that? Um, let's see, solid info threshold. Okay, so if, if you have something really small, this is gonna decide to fill it in. Um, skirt and brim. We tend to just do one loop um, and six millimeters, but let's say, so you can go in here, the skirt is the green around it. We could change this to two. Like, let's say if we've got a small part and it's really important to not have air bubbles, um, that can be the reason for that, or to let the, the temperature stabilize for longer in the nozzle. 
skirt height we tend to do one layer but you could let's let's do five and then you're just gonna see that it prints a taller skirt around the model um, we tend to use one support material we try to have students not use support material and uh, the reason is we want them to keep in mind the design considerations of avoiding overhangs um, support material will work for prints and it and it can be helpful but we tend to discourage it in our classes unless they're really designing like a robot part or something that needs to be designed the way it is and there is no good way to orient the shape to avoid overhangs so that they do in fact need the support material generally we discourage students from using support material and then there's rafts um, if you've got a you know your prints just don't print well the first layer you can use these rafts and that'll kind of print to if your bed isn't level or if your bed is kind of wavy this can compensate for some of that and then the bottom of your model can be nice you gotta peel this off it'll usually come off fairly well for us um, but you do have to peel that off we tend to do this at zero print speeds you don't necessarily want to mess with these um, but I mean if you're a hobbyist and you know you want to get that print speed up just watch your print quality watch for ghosting and all kinds of different things that can happen when you're printing too fast and your 3d printer kind of vibrates around multiple extruders we tend to not use this but we do have some dual extruders here and these are things that you need to mess with with that um, advanced and you can just read what these are so um, so for example the first layer extrusion width um, that can matter um, if you want to make sure that the first layer is kind of filled in not too thin also not too thick there's a lot of things you can change in there to help with that filament settings um, one thing is actually measure your filament use some calipers and measure the filament and put in the real dimension not just uh, what they tell you it is because they do calculate this for going through the nozzle diameter um, and it's not very easy to measure the nozzle diameter so um, go ahead and measure that filament extrusion multiplier if you increase this it's just going to increase the amount of plastic it's pushing out beyond what it calculated it should um, so if you've got it's just not printing enough material um, you can increase that extrusion multiplier try not to change it by much though um, these are the actual filament temperatures so first layer and later layers um, your first layer might need to be different because that first layer is very special it needs to really stick to the bed and do a good job so you might need to change these these values for different for the first layer and all the other layers and then this can be helpful like if you're going over bridges or if you're printing with ABS which we don't do in our in-person classes we use PLA um, but you can change these to um, help the part maybe not be so droopy or not start to uh, warp and pull off of the bed then we got printer settings so you've got things like the bed shape so you can go into this and this is for the uh, the mini delta that we use sometimes we've also got i3s and other stuff um, the number of extruders um, which type of g-code you're making we tend to leave this as standard and your start and end g-code and stuff like that so for the uh, delta printers we do auto level this is an old version of our auto leveling um, but it's important to auto level with the monoprice mini delta and extruder one so you can see and you could have multiple extruders and watch the extruder offset it might not go the direction that you expect so be ready to you know print small parts with both nozzles and just be ready to iterate and do a little trial and error with this uh, nozzle diameter so you got some of the basic settings here so those are some of the the main settings that you might see and use in slick 3r bus besides just loading the config adding the model scaling the model checking this um, making sure it's level with preview exporting the g-code these are some of the the other things that you might need to do um, generally at convert the teacher is mostly going to handle this um, but some students will buy their own 3D printer and they do need to know how to set this sort of stuff up. So this is Keith from Kinvert. We went over some of the more advanced settings in Slick 3R. This is part of our online course on CAD and 3D printing. Hope you found this useful and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.